Hey, what's up y'all? Glad here. Welcome back to another Octopath Traveler COTC video. Today we'll be talking about some of the best allies that you can get for your team. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be breaking this list down accordingly. Physical attackers, best for breaking shields, along with elemental attackers, debuffers and status elements, buffers, and healers. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with the physical attackers, and we'll start with tomes. Uh, for tomes, there's not a lot of love for tomes, uh, not, not a lot of allies that use tome attacks, but you can find this NPC in the Flames Grace in the Cathedral. Her name is the Religious Scholar, and she has a two-hit tome that can be somewhat decent for your team starting on early. And then moving on to Crag Spear on the bottom half of the map in the slums, you can go to Walton Down and meet an NPC called the Cynical Pauper. Unfortunately, he only has a two-hit tome, and for some reason, if you need another two-hit tome ally, you can use him and the other lady in the Flames Grace. All right, continuing with tomes, you can go ahead and waltz on your way over to Deesha Falls, and then head on over to the westernmost house, uh, second house in the bottom of the map, and then you'll go ahead and go into a library-like uh, setting, and you'll see a familiar face. Uh, this guy is the master of books. He's also the one that has the battle test of tomes. Sadly, currently in the game right now, he's the only ally that has access to a 3-hit tome attack. Alright, moving on to daggers. Let's go ahead and head on to Shepherd's Rock, where we can find our first dagger ally. You can find him in the middle of the map, right on top of the fountain on the upper left corner. Uh, he should have some kids around him, and his name is the Cheerful Acrobat. Alright, moving along, and let's go ahead and head on over to Victor's Hollow. Uh, from the end, you want to go ahead and move all the way up to the next map on top. And then you'll go ahead and see the very first NPC standing to the right. He is the Argumentative Man. He has a 3 head dagger attack that lowers shield points regardless of their weakness. So that's really nice to have. Alright, trucking along, let's go ahead and move on over to our bull arms. This 3 head bull arm NPC is actually... Just to the love of the uh, three-head dagger guy we were talking about not too long ago, um, he is known as the he is Mont de Or. There's not a lot of love for NPC polar allies. There's also another three-head polar user in Donaskew, just in case you needed that. On to the next. Let's go ahead and head on over to the bow allies. Now there's actually quite a bit of bow allies in this game here. Again, we'll be focusing on the allies that do the most uh, attacks and. You can find the first one in Shepherd's Rock. He is a three-hit attacker, and he is located on the right side of the map from the inn. His name is the Nimble Carpenter. Adding on to that, let's go ahead and head on over to Ripple Tide, where we'll meet our next three-hit ball user. Uh, head on over to the right side of the map from the inn. We'll go ahead and go into Tressa's house, and we'll talk to her mom, Marina. She has access to a three-hit ball attack, which can be really useful. Finally, for the last bow ally user, you're gonna head down to Emelglow, uh, go to the right side of the map, uh, the Emelglow East District, and we're gonna go ahead and go all the way down to the bottom of the map, and I'm sure you all know who this is, but this is the Tottering Old Man, which has the Battle Tested Bow. He is the only person in the game right now that has access to a forehead bow attack that you can summon as your ally. Granted again, this is if you can beat him or not. Moving on to Stabs. Let's go ahead and head on over to Victor's Hollow. I'll meet you in the tavern, and we'll go ahead and find a man and a woman dining at a table to what seems to be like a turkey and a wine bottle. You want to go ahead and talk to the man on the right? He is known as the Defeated Gambler. He has access to a 1-5 to five hit staff attack, which is pretty nice. Now that is if you're feeling lucky during your fight. Sadly, there's not a lot of staff allies in the game that are any better than him. As you may know it, we like having allies that can attack more than 3 times. Moving on to Axe users, let's go ahead and head on over to Crack Spear, and then from the end you want to go all the way down to the bottom map, or to the slums, and then all the way down to the bottom area of the map. You're going to meet this man called the Gold Hunter. He is the only NPC in the game right now that has access to a 3 hit axe attack, so he can be somewhat useful. Fanning on to our next attack user, let's go ahead and head on over to Donskew. We'll go ahead and find our next 3 hit fan user. She is the Resolute Nobleman. She has access to a 3 hit fan attack to a single target, and unfortunately, currently, she is the only person in the game that has access to a 3 hit fan attack. Finally, let's go ahead and find our allies that use a sword. Let's go ahead and head on over to Shepherd's Rock, and from the end, you want to go ahead and head on down to the bottom map, head on down to the left upper side of the house, 
You want to make sure you go to the one in the middle, and then once inside the house, you'll go ahead and meet a man called the Once Aspiring Knight. He has access to a three-headed sword attack, it's random, but it's a three-headed attack regardless. Continuing from there, let's go ahead and head on down to Victor's Hollow, and then from the end, we'll go to the very left side of the map. We'll go talk to a NPC called the Longsword Mercenary. He has a one-hit sword attack with a 20% defense down, and if you have fewer, you should know that this is the same ability that she uses, the Crumbling Cut. Okay, finally moving on to our elemental attackers. Let's go ahead and talk about Ice first. I'll meet you in Sunshade. And then from there, let's go ahead and head on over to Tavern. Now there's not a lot of love for ice users. Let's go ahead and talk to the, uh, the very first NPC on the right. Her name is the Brave Tavern Maid. And unfortunately there is only a two hit ice attack ally in the game. Blowing over to our next elemental attack allies, let's go ahead and head on over to Crackspear. You want to go down to the slums, and then you want to go down to like the middle part of the map, to the very middle like house, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and meet the the man confronting tyranny he has the three hit win attack that hits all foes so that's pretty nice to have and then moving from there let's go ahead and move on to the flames grace this next three hit win user is located inside the flames grace tavern he is the leftmost npc and his win attacks are all single target additionally let's go ahead and head on over to victor's hollow where we can go ahead and find a windy buffer ally now from the end you can go ahead and move on up you should find her on the right side of the stalls her name is the Trailing Gourmand. She has access to Wind Prone 3, or a 20% AoE Wind Resist down for all foes. Lighting the way for our next elemental attacker ally. Let's go ahead and head on over to the Flames Grace. Uh, let's go ahead and go all the way to the Cathedral. So from the beginning of the map, from the end, you want to go out. And then we'll go ahead and meet a bald guy. His name is the Elderly Cleric. He has a 2 hit light attack. The potency on, the, on that is only 150. And currently in the state of the game, there are no 3 hit light attack allies. And then, not too far from him, we also meet our next two-hit light ally, in the very same cathedral. And like the center of the map, you can go ahead and meet a female NPC called the Zealot. She has a two-hit light attack that's a little bit stronger than his, with a potency of 180. Moving on to our next element, Dark. Let's move to Gregsbear, and then from there, the house next to the tavern. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of love for Dark allies in this game as there's only one ally in the game that has access to a 2 hit dark attack. Sadly at this point in time we do not have a 3 hit dark attack ally. On to our next element, which is lightning. There's not a lot of love for this element uh, for allies, but let's go ahead and head on over to Victor's Hollow, and then we'll go ahead and go all the way to the old quarter, so the left side of the map, and then we'll go ahead and meet a guy called the old storyteller. Now this guy is the level 100 NPC, chances are you're probably not going to fight him for his ally skill. In the case that you're crazy enough to, he has a 5 hit uh, lightning attack, and currently in the game, there are no other ally in the game that has a multiple lightning attack. There's one ally in Emoglow that has a 1 hit AoE lightning attack, but that's about it. On to our next element, fire. So let's go ahead and make our way over to Flames Grace, and then from the end, we'll go ahead and make our way to the right side, he should be the very first NPC that we meet, the Avaricious Merchant. He has a 3 hit fire attack, which is really nice to have. Adding on to that, let's go ahead and head on over to Sufat al -Jah, and then we want to go all the way down to the bottom of the map where we'll meet this NPC called the Taskmaster. His ally skill allows us to lower the fire resist of the Alphos by 20%, so that's really nice to have. Let's go ahead and move away from damage dealers and talk about debuffers head on over to Surfat Alja, and then from there, let's go ahead and talk to the very first NPC that you meet uh, from the starting point. His name is the Despairing Miner. He has access to a 20% AoE magic down, which is really nice to have. On to our next debuffer, let's go ahead and head on over to Flames Grace, and we'll go ahead and go to the very left when you spawn into the map. We'll go ahead and talk to the Warrior Father. He has access to a 20% physical attack and crit down for an enemy. That's pretty nice. Moving on to Donsku, if you're looking for an ally that debuffs both attack and magic and say less. From the map, you're gonna go ahead and move on up to the uh, the uppermost house that you can find. You'll come across the little church, and you want to talk to the soldier guy on the right, the cowardly soldier. He has the ally skill anti-attack, as we know from VLO skill. It is a 15% single target attack and magic down for 3 turns. Now, if you're hoping to find an ally that has more of a defense down deep up, say less. But let's go ahead and head on over to Crackspear, and then head on all the way to the rightmost side of the map. You'll go ahead and meet a guy called the Brig 
and boss. He has the Mass Armor Corrosive 3, which is a 20% AoE physical defense down. Now, what if your enemy is moving too fast? Let's go ahead and head over to Donskyu, and then go to the right side of the map to the south right here. You're gonna go in, and you're gonna talk to this lady here. She's the old Seeress. She's pretty unique. She has a 20% single target speed down, and she also allows you to view one weak spot, which is nice to have. We're almost there. Let's go ahead and talk about the debuffers. In this case, status elements. Let's go ahead and head on over to Flames Grace, and again, we're gonna go ahead and talk to the Worried Father. He's probably one of the best allies in the game. He can lower physical attack, and he has a moderate chance to inflict sleep, which I feel is gonna be a status element that's gonna be pretty big in the future. Moving on from him, Austin Flames Grace, as you move on towards the middle of the map, you'll find a lonely old lady. She has a high chance to sleep, and again, this status element right now, uh, no character has access to, so it's pretty unique at the moment. Well, since I'm here, I might as well recruit her to my team. Surely 85% chance can fail, right? Oof. Second time's a charm. Uh, maybe beat the third time's a charm? Hey, hey, not bad. How do you feel 85% chance to three times? <laughs> That's pretty sad. Let's go ahead and keep on talking about sleep, because looks like I might need some pretty soon. Let's go ahead and go down to Victor's Hollow, and then you want to make your way down from the inn and talk to a dancer, the Bewitching Dancer. She has a high sleep chance and she also does a fan damage to all foes. So that's pretty nice to have. On to our next status elements. Let's go ahead and head on back to Sufrat Elja. And then from here, let's go ahead and move all the way down to the right side of the map. Or you want to talk to this miner looking guy. Uh, the hardworking miner is his name. He has a skill called the Sand He has a high blind chance and also does a lot of wind damage to a single target. So that's pretty nice. Alright, getting stunned. Let's go ahead and head on to Ripple Tide and talk about Paralyze. Uh, right now in the game, there is no NPC out there that gives us a high chance of paralysis. Uh, you can go ahead and move on up and all the way to the ship area to the upper left corner. You'll want to talk to a guy called Sailor Turned Merchant. He has a moderate paralysis chance. And then talking about that, let's go ahead and move on over to Flames Grace. Talk to the drunken soldier inside the tavern. He has an AoE moderate paralysis chance plus poison. We're almost there. Let's go ahead and talk about buffers now. Let's go ahead and make our way to Flames Grace, into the cathedral. Let's go talk to the patient cleric. He has the ally skill of the elemental attack and elemental defense AoE 15%. Really nice to have. And then right outside of the uh, cathedral, you can talk to this soldier called the Brown Knight Ardant. He has access to physical defense and magical defense of 20%, which is probably the best in the game at the moment. And then from there, let's go ahead and go to Sufrat Elja for buffing our speed. You have this one character on the right side of the map. His name is the Busy Young Miner. He's able to increase your front squad speed by 20%, which is really nice. So what if you need an ally that can raise your speed, defense, and elemental defense? Well, let's go ahead and head on over to Shepherd's Rock, and inside the tavern, you'll go ahead and meet a mysterious dancer. She should be sitting on the table. She's able to buff your entire front squad speed, physical, and elemental defense by 15%. Super great half. Well, what if you're trying to increase your crit rate? Let's go ahead and stay in Shepherd's Rock, and then let's go ahead and move on down to the bottom area of the map. You want to go ahead and talk to the chatty old woman. She allows you to raise your front squad's physical attack, elemental attack, and critical by 15%. Again, really nice to have. Now it's finally time for the best healer allies in the game. You want to make your way down to Donskyu, again back to the little church. On the on the middle side of the map, you want to this time talk to the priest, the Saint's Bridge priest. He gives you an AOE cure and also a regen, so that's really nice to have. Now, if you're trying to find an ally that can carry you and status elements, well then let's go ahead and head on over to Flames Grace, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, the map on top. You want to go to the uh, the far right house and then talk to a man called the Thoughtful Man. He gives you AOE cure and he also cures some status elements. Do you ever find yourself running out of SP? Well, me too. Let's go ahead and go back to the Flames Grace Cathedral and we can talk to a man sitting on the bench. He is the well-connected merchant and right now currently he has the most restore for SP for all allies. He has a restoration of 50 which is super great to have. Alright, we're finally at the end of the video. This video took me way too long to make. Having to talk to every NPC was not very fun. <laughs> Let me know if this video helps you and like always, take care of yourself. Lad out.